Okay, let's finish this part 3. Now make two identical circles, one being smaller and put sandpaper on top of it so you can fold the sandpaper down and then make it like a dome shape. So here in the left one you can see two tubes. The bottom one should be the widest. Make a hole at the top and the bottom and a pin so that can go through it all the way, as you can see in this picture. The top one should be able to slide in the bottom one, as in the, the, whole, uh, the tubes. Glue the bottom one onto the thing that you made in the last step and make this round piece that lets the tube through. Glue it in between the holes and slide the top tube all the way in. Keep in mind that there should be a little edge that goes above it and then mark where the hole is like with a pencil. Pull it out and then cut the hole in the top tube as your pencil should have made a round circle. Then at the end of the top tube, glue a nut in. Then screw, get a screw that fits it and insert it to the gun. As shown in the middle diagram, the top of the screw should be inside the gun so that it doesn't fall out. Uh, which means you should put the screw in from the top of the stock as in like reach in, and then screw the monopod up to the screw after gluing it down with lots of glue, as in gluing the screw down. Then you will have an adjustable monopod. This is what it should look like when it's extended and in the gun. Now cover the corrugation at the bottom as you can see right now. Remember the ring around the screw should be able to fit your top tube and the bottom tube in when it's like uh, retracted and in the gun, so it can, you can screw in all the way. Now for the rail on top. There are three kinds of rails ranging from difficulty. I already made a video about this subject, so go watch that. It's just three minutes, won't take much, and it will save me time explaining it. Link in description and on the card on the top right corner right now. Now for the butt pad. Cut out the general shape and then wrap some cardboard around it, as you can see right now. This will be the base plate for the butt pad. That's the other one, that is the, uh, the one at the end. It has a weird shape, so we'll worry about it later. Then now make this shape with this hole and cover the corrugation. Now for the bit at the back, you just have to make it like a box. It's just the two sides, cut in the shape you want and then cover the tops. And then fill in the back with a piece of cardboard. Also put the two things that you made uh, here. They should be angled outwards and be on both sides. Now draw a circle and cut out 25% of it and then cover the corrugation on one side. The bottom side will be glued on there as you can see right now. And this Make this triangle piece, it's basically just the top piece and then wrap uh, top layer around it and then you have this and then trim it down so it's like a triangle and then stick it below that thing and then make that hole above the, above them as well on the receiver. Now let's finish the barrel. Basically to make it longer because you probably don't have a meter long paper to roll up and it will also be very hard to roll up. So basically yeah, you go to the end, make a tube that is slightly smaller but it's very tight on the bottom barrel, shove it in very tightly and then make another barrel that is the same width basically it's basically the same as the bottom one and then just shove it onto the smaller one then you have two barrels with a thing in the middle that will connect them both and then glue it down glue it on the seam then it'll be strong and it won't just flap around like because there's a thing in the middle to hold it and it'll also be very straight so yeah make this octagon or whatever it's called and then make the hole in the middle be able to fit the barrel and then the one on the other side should be able to stop at the end of the barrel so it doesn't let the barrel through and then after that <clears throat> make this round make a round uh, tube on top of the octagon and then cover the corrugation on that then make these two cut, cut these two uh, identical circular shapes with the same size of hole uh, which is the bullet size by the way the diameter should be the bullets diameter and then glue it on top of the thing with uh, Supporting what's it called like poles. No, it's not poles. It's just like flat things like on the real thing uh, Should be same length and cover all the corrugation and then at the end add a little cap by just rolling some cardboard and covering the corrugation simple and then also add the details where pins should have should be going in but we can't do that on cardboard I, don't, I mean you can but it's hard but I just do a hole it's same thing I'm on the end there as you can see on the top which is the bottom also do one at the very top of it as in like the top uh, face of the octagon that faces up to the sky because there's a hole there that you can mount like front sides onto on the real thing so yeah make that it's just a little hole same size now make these two it's just basically a circle and you cut them in half and then cover the corrugation and then Mount them at the front sideways, as you can see right now. Now, make a tube and then uh, cover the corrugation at the tip of it. Make two holes and bend this piece of wire into this shape. Then, 
Make two circles with a hole the same size as a pin so you can fit it through and then put it to the bottom. Uh, remember there should be a little space in between the corrugation, like the brown bit and the round pieces themselves. And then glue it down, cover the corrugation everywhere and done. Now make a corresponding hole to the pin at the hand guard, whatever you call it. Then shove it in and glue it down as you can see in this picture. Now for the bipod, make a trapezium with a rectangle at the back. Cover all the corrugations. And then at the sides of the trapezium, drill two holes and put two pins through. Then roll up two paper tubes and then put the tops of them inside. Like make a hole at the top of them and then put them through the pins and then make another hole at the like a little bit outside of the thing as you can see at the bottom. Uh, then put two pins through, that'll be where your rubber band goes through. Normally on the real thing it'll be the spring, but I don't have that kind of spring, so I'm using rubber band as a substitute. Now on the rectangle you made before, just put a pin through that is a little bit longer than the rectangle itself and then put the rubber bands through from the pin on the rod and the pin on the rectangle thing and then uh, glue some pieces on the edges to prevent them from coming out easily. Now if you are like me and scared of these rods falling out, you can also add this triangle thingy. Just be careful to not accidentally glue the rods in. It was very hard for me to glue this together but it works so it's fine. I mean, I recommend you don't. Uh, if you put the rods in nicely, they'll probably fit nicely. And yeah. And then also put this top piece, as you can see there, to limit how far it can go when it's folded up. And yeah, make this piece strong. Now just glue it on, simple. Here's a bottom view of how it's glued and how the pins should look like and all that good stuff. So yeah. Now for the front shape thing, I didn't really care about it because I'm not going to use it for anything. I just made two of these shapes and then you can see on the right side there's a piece of top layer I just do that and then wrap it around and at the front bit uh, the front piece I mean uh, I added this half half of the shape so make it have that step and then I just wrap the whole thing around and then put some holes at the side and of course cover the corrugation at the front now make a bunch of paper pins with the uh, edges I mean the tops and the bottoms covered with cardboard and then do a little black dot with like a mark or something and for the bits that you can't reach in as in like reach a pin all the way through you'll uh, make just like a circle and then add some uh i don't know what they call it like weight no it's not like, like like things at the bottom of it to make it come out and not just sit at the bottom so yeah so yeah at the places where you can just shove the pin through just do that and you can see the sides now all filled in, the holes. And then at the place that so you can't, for example, the place where the trigger box is or nearby it, you might have something covering it, then just do, uh, you know, as I've just previously, pre previously said, do a circle thing and then put something under it so it comes up flush, not flush, but like a little bit in, but not too in, if you know what. Now for the cheek rail pins themselves, we're going to make them now. Make these holes, uh, I mean shapes, circles, all of them are circles. Um, the right ones on the right, the f uh, each three, as you can see there, the top three, on the top right, the three of them is one set, and then the bottom three on the right is another set, and then the four on the left is one set. Um, the ones on the right will be on the right side of the gun, and then the one on the left will be on the left side of the gun. So basically, you stack them together, and then you put the one that has a ring, inner ring, cut, cut the inner ring, cut the inner hole out. Then you just put the outer ring on top of the thing and then cover all the corrugation and done, you have a pin that is detailed. Of course, on the bottom one, the bottom uh, circle, you should have also a big enough hole for your pin itself to go into so that it will be secure. For the left side, it's going to be a little more complicated. You just stack them all together as well, except for the top one, you don't really need to make another layer. It's just the top layer of it, so you can see there. And then make another hole in the bottom for the pin, actually make that hole first, like let the pin go through and then glue it together. And then go to the cone generator and enter the dimensions and then wrap it around after you got your template. Now we will work on the scope. First make a tube, long tube that will be the main body. Then make a box that will let the tube through. Shove the tube into the box as you can see. Uh, look at your reference picture, you sh it'll, it'll be obvious where it should be. Make this uh, box without the bottom and then just put it on the bottom of the box that will be the main structure that basically holds onto your rail and then here you can somewhat see I added two little tiny strips on the bottom 
this lets the thing actually grab onto the rail and not just fall off when I flip off the gun. It's like the real thing. It's just like a uh, rail on the bottom, somewhat. Um, yeah, it should be able to go under your rail and then afterwards we'll add something on the at the middle to keep it from falling down and staying on the right height we want. Also for the reticle or side picture, whatever you want to call it, um, just shove two pins at the place where adjusting knobs should be. Uh, you just have to shove pins through and then from like adjust them until they are like straight and then glue them down on both sides. Um, then you just you can make it messy. It's fine because you're gonna cover it with the knobs anyways, as you you will see later. Uh, you cover them with the adjusting knobs, but unless you want to make them adjustable, I don't know how a scope works, so I didn't. Um, it's just a crosshair, it's simple. It's just two wires shoved into the thing and they make a good crosshair, yeah. Now I'll make a tube that wraps around the main body tube that is long enough to go from the end of the scope itself and then the front of the uh, thing that you can turn. As you can see in this picture as well, after you do that and confirm that it fits, you cut out a ring on the top of it and then cut another uh, bit and that'll be your uh, spinny bit so you can and then the rest of it will be at the back glued in so now glue the ring in but not the spinny bit if you want to be, make it like spin like be able to, to be able to turn it so just glue the end bit so it doesn't just fall out and don't glue the spinny bit then get some hot glue to give it extra and also grip. glue the rest of the back thingy on so you have a complete back thing with a spinny die or whatever. Now for this bit, just wrap around it, like wrap it at the end, um, but not on one side, if you know what I mean. Keep it flat on one side and not cut the corrugation on the bottom and then remove the bottom layers at the part that is supposed to wrap around. And so you'll get a flat surface with a top layer wrapping around the scope. So you have this effect. Now go to the cone generator, do the same thing, and then get your uh, front cones template. And then glue it on, simple. Now for dials and stuff, basically you just make a tube with cardboard, roll it around, and then cover the top with a round piece cut out with the corrugation covered. Simple. That is a little bit bigger than the tube. And then you can just put it on top, add the markings, and then done. Same thing here, just make your top cap thingy put the markings on, make a piece of cardboard that is rolled up, add the markings, add some glue to make it like have the ribbed effect because you really can't do that with cardboard. And then cover the corrugations, um, make the front tube, cover the corrugation as well, simple. And then cover more of the corrugation. And then cover more of the corrugation and add the markings. Cover more corrugation. And now just get some top layer or not just like the top two with the corrugation uh, roll it around the scope on the ends of the thing at the bottom you can see on the left and the right um, then just glue it down and yeah or you can also do the detailed method that Magic on Amazing did I'm, I'm, can't, I'm too lazy, can't do it, can't be bothered so I did this instead, it works fine now put your finished scope on top of the rail and then at the gap there, you can see I added a piece, so pull on it, like at the top, don't pull too hard, but like, so pull it so the bottoms of, but the bottom two rails touches the bottom of the Picatinny rail, and then slide that middle piece in and glue the ends onto it, and then done, you have your set height. Now for the final step of the scope, you make these two pins with a paper, roll up a paper, roll, cap, whatever, pin, and then shove the wire in them and then just uh, when you put your scope on top of the rail of the Picatinny rail and at one slot keep in mind that you have to be careful don't accidentally penetrate your Picatinny rail so at the slot where it's like there's a space you shove the pin through from the scope and then so and then you shove it through then after that um, your pin will basically, both of them will keep the scope onto the Picatinny rail and it won't fall out and slide out. So yeah, simple. And then add a little bit of glue in the end to keep it in. So every time you pull it out, you have to use some force. And yeah. Finally, just make 
just like add the text, like the marking, serial numbers, etc., etc., and done. And with that, we're done. I hope that your gun looks somewhat like mine. I hope that you enjoyed. Although this was not a good video because I hate making tutorials. Um, if you want to watch my other videos, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, join the Discord server, show me your gun if you actually do make it, but I doubt it. Um, support me on Patreon if you want and all that good stuff. Goodbye. Uh, watch my other videos. I hate making tutorials. I'm like so tired. I hate this.